So good morning and welcome to Whitford Parish and our service of spiritual Holy Communion, 14th of February. You should be able to find the order of service on the website and there's a link that you can click attached to this post. So the Lord be with you and also with you. We join together in saying our mission statement prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, please help us to grow to be more like Jesus. We want to get to know Christ together by loving one another, serving others, and being at the heart of our community. Lord Jesus, please encourage us on our way. Amen. And now Rob and Lydia are going to um, lead us in Be Thou My Vision words are on the screen. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Be all else but more to me, save that thou art. Be thou my best thought in the day and the night. Both waking and sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom, be thou my true word. Be thou ever with me, and I with thee, Lord. Be thou my great Father. And I thy true son, be thou in me dwelling, and I with thee dwell. Be thou my breastplate, my sword for the fight, be thou my whole honor, be thou my true light. So shelter, be thou my strong tower. Oh, raise thou me heavenward, great power of my power. Riches I need not, nor man's empty praise. Be thou my inheritance now and always. Me thou and thou only the first in my heart. O sovereign of heaven, my treasure thou art. My King of heaven, thou heaven's bright sun, O oh, grant me its joys after victory is won. Great heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be thou my vision, so we prepare our hearts before God. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen.
Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be. That we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so our collect for this morning. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, Give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now Shirley's going to bring us our Old Testament reading. Thank you, Shirley. One, two, three. Our reading is from the second book of Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha went up their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elijah and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. 
50 men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, he replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. This is the word of the Lord. And now Keith and Sheila are going to lead us with amazing grace. My chains are gone. Words are on the screen.
is going to bring us our gospel reading. Thank you, Alan. And then that will be followed by Andy, who will be bringing us our sermon today. Thank you, Andy. The reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, and is verses 2 to 9. The Transfiguration. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, lovely to be with you. Star Wars is one of my favourite movie sagas of all time. And over the years, I have become quite fond of the wit and of the wisdom of Master Yoda. And for those of you who are not familiar with the character, Yoda is this small but wise and powerful warrior uh, who had many students in his lifetime. He was the master of a bunch of magical knights called the Jedi in the films. And also in the films, he was looked up to and revered by many, living to the ripe old age of 900 before passing away in the movies. Uh, a lot of time to gain a lot of wisdom. But in Star Wars, some of these masters were able to come back and speak with their former students. And in one of the recent entries into the film saga, we see Master Yoda coming back to speak to a very upset and a very dejected Luke Skywalker. You see, Luke feel, felt like he uh, hadn't lived up to being the person and the master that he was meant to be, that as the, uh, whatever had happened, he hadn't got it right and that he had failed. And it's at this point uh, that Yoda teaches Luke a really valuable lesson. In Yoda's eyes, a master is the thing that the student grows beyond. A master is the thing that the student grows beyond. And in this morning's passages, we see uh, some students. We see uh, Elisha in one of the readings and we have the disciples in the other uh, reading, somewhat perplexed by their masters. Uh, but uh, especially in the first case, it's because the student is uh, there to grow beyond their masters. And uh, w w in the second reading, it's because the students need to go beyond where they are right now. And in the first passage, we see Elijah and we see Elisha. The master and the teacher, Elijah, has become old. Uh, he's not got long left on the planet. And the people around know it. They taunt them uh, and they tease uh, Elisha, who's got to take up the mantle. And both the master and the student are walking. And it's almost in some respects like Elijah is testing his protege. He's repeatedly telling him to stay where he is, uh, to which Elisha says uh, simply, no, I, I will not go. Where you go, I will go. And the reason becomes clear. The great prophet Elijah is about to be taken from Elisha. Uh, and it's almost like it can't happen until the student is ready to let go of the master. And the student is desperate to still learn from the master. And it's almost like Elijah is turning around to his student and saying, look, what on earth must I do in order for you to, to go and simply do what you're meant to do? You're ready. I've trained you. You're ready to go. Just go and do it. 
And actually, in the in the language of the original text, it's quite comical in some respects. It's almost like he's saying, "Look, I am trying to die, and I can't do it until you uh, until you let me go. You're not letting me die. Just please let me go." But what is it that Elisha wants? Well, I think uh, he's been thinking about it for some time. He's been thinking it over, uh, and it's this: he doesn't want to be just as good as his master. He actually wants to go beyond him. He wants to be twice as good. He wants and knows that he needs to grow beyond Elijah. And whilst the manner in which Elijah departs might well have been stressful for Elisha, it's confirmation that his request has been heard and it has been granted. He will indeed build on the foundations of his master and go beyond. And in our second reading, we have the famous passage of the Transfiguration of Jesus, where our friend from the previous passage makes another appearance alongside Moses. Elijah comes back in, this, in the story, uh, but he's not the centrepiece here, and neither is Moses. Uh, the centrepiece of this story, the, the main event, is Jesus himself. Their appearance is confirmation that Jesus is who the prophets were pointing to. And there's a lot that we could say about the transfiguration, but at the center of it, I, I always think there's two things. Firstly, that Jesus is exactly who he says he is, and this is confirmation. Jesus is the Messiah. Peter has been suspicious of it, and he has his suspicions confirmed. But uh, secondly, and also really fundamentally, uh, the disciples, get a vision of the future. They can see what lies beyond where they are now. Christ in all his glory, Christ in bright electric white, Christ as he will be after his death and his resurrection. The disciples not, might not realise it there and then, but they have been given a new vision. And vision is important. It was important for the disciples in what's about to happen with the road to Jerusalem and the cross and the resurrection. But it's important for us as the church because it enables us to have purpose and direction. It aim, gives us something to aim for. And we all need a vision of Christ uh, in his glory. Who he is, uh, it's important because as the church we are the body of Christ on earth. And there will always be a time where a bit like uh, Elijah and Elisha, we will have to pass on and the students will become the teachers and they will be trusted with the next part of the story. It's a biblical thing. We see it clearly in the first reading with Elijah and Elisha and Jesus himself would pass on the responsibility of the church to Peter. And the transfiguration is key in giving them the assurance of who Jesus is uh, for that purpose. They have something to aim for. They've seen something with their own eyes that they can't not testify to. And while many of us may feel like we're a long way from passing on the baton just at this present time, um, that time will come to us all. We will all have to pass on what we've learnt to the next generation. And as a part of this process, what I think is really key and fundamental is that we do all we can to prepare the next generation, not just to carry what we have, but to go beyond where we are now, to do better than us, to, to grow beyond where we are. And this morning, a few questions for us. Have we got a clear vision of who Jesus wants to be as a church? And as church with a big C, not the Whitford, but capital C church, big picture. Do we have a clear vision of where we're going? Are we giving our younger members something to aim for that resembles God's own glory? A destination beyond where we are now. One example is uh, like for today, for instance, uh, has been marked as a day where in the church we remember the issues surrounding racial justice. It's a topic that I'm sure many of you will have heard a lot about recently in the news, uh, but we're hearing a lot about it because something needs to be done for the future generations. We are not getting it right. 
And this is an area where future generations will need to grow beyond us and do better than where we are now. We are what the future generations grow beyond. And the one thing that we can learn from the transfiguration of Christ in that is that that vision is a powerful thing. It changes our perspective and it enables us to walk on a different path to the one we thought we might be walking towards. Who Christ is matters and capturing that vision afresh is important for all of us. Are we praying into those issues? Because let's face it, it's not just racial justice. There are loads of ways in which we need to do better as a church. We need to deal with all the areas of difference with more grace than we have over the years. We've made strides in gender. Uh, the conversation over sexuality is ongoing and racial justice has come to the forefront. And it's important because it matters. A vision of Christ in his glory is in some respects one of unity. In John's Gospel, in chapter 17, uh, it's, we see the last great prayer of Jesus before his arrest and the events of the cross and the resurrection. He prays for unity, that we might be together. But unity doesn't mean that we're all the same. It means that despite our differences, we can still come together and celebrate the love of God amongst us. And I think that's a great vision for the future, where we can disagree but disagree well. We are going to have to pass on that baton sooner or later. The students will become the teachers. And a question for us all now is, are we developing a culture and a church where those who come after us can grow beyond? What are we doing to nurture those who will go beyond us? The truth is that sometimes as a church, we could be a bit like Luke Skywalker. We can feel a bit sorry for ourselves and feel like we haven't gotten everything right and become a bit dejected and get stuck in our ways. But the truth is, we can never get everything right. But we can have faith that the generations beyond us can continue to build God's kingdom for his glory. Whether it's the race issues, whether it's the environment, uh, whether it's challenging hate of any kind, the call of the church is to create the building blocks of God's kingdom. And those building blocks are called disciples. And those disciples will build on the foundations that we are laying now. And so I want to ask the question, what foundations are we laying? And how might they be built upon tomorrow? Let's pass on the baton well. Let's allow those after us to go beyond where we are now. So let's join together in saying the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Jill and Peter are going to lead us in our prayers. Thank you. Good morning. For our prayers this morning, please, when we say, Lord, we need your help, can you respond and say, Lord, please help us. So let us pray together. Our first prayer is on love. Dear Heavenly Father, your word says that we love because God first loved us. 
Thank you for loving me and thank you for loving us and thank you for loving everyone in the world. Nothing can ever take away your love for us. Your love, God, is unconditional. Your love is forever. Your love never, ever ends. So I pray for us all that we would all know the deep love of God today and in the days to come. May we all experience and feel how high and how deep and how wide. Our Father God loves us. Lord, we need your help. Lord, please help us. Now we come to pray for our world and nation. Dear Lord, your word says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Father God, our world and nation is crying out to you. There is so much pain and sorrow, and many people are suffering in body and mind, and also emotionally and spiritually, as a result of the COVID pandemic that, we're, that we are all facing together. We have an opportunity now to mention places and people that are on our hearts today that are suffering. You could say their names aloud or quietly in our hearts. We especially pray for children and young people who have been the victims of crime. Sadly, many children are suffering. We pray for the national charity Embrace, set up to help then recover after being victims of crime. Please encourage Tammy in her climbing venture to raise money to help these child victims of crime. Lord, we need your help. Lord, please help us. A prayer for our community. Lord, thank you for Whitford Parish and thank you for all the goodness and love and sense of community that we have. Please help us to keep responding to people in love and may your love for us and our love for each other shine out and signpost people to know and receive your amazing love for them. Thank you for the great plan to decorate some windows in our homes with an Easter hope message. Please give to those who are creating your creativity and may the Easter message of hope be seen and received by many people. Lord, we pray for everyone living in our parish today. We especially pray for those in our parish prayer diary living in Hillside Grove and Hillside Mews. We also keep praying for God's wisdom and vision for the Whitford Parish post-Covid and especially God's leading the Soft Play Project. We want to live out our mission statement of serving others and being at the heart of our community. We want to pray also for the local church charity made for more, formerly SYM, as this charity offers support in our Chelmsford Secondary Schools. We pray you would use the opportunity the team the charity has to bring God's love into the students and teachers lives. May the mentoring one-to-one -one scheme for the students be especially effective even if it is on Zoom in these difficult days that we're all living through. Lord we really do need your help. Lord please help us. We now pray for our church family. Dear God, thank you for our church family. Thank you for all the love and care we receive and give to each other. Thank you we have been building one another up and keeping together in prayer and fellowship and by having church in new ways and places. Thank you God for phone calls, for poems and stories written for each other for visits, for cards, for walks together, for gifts, for Lent bags and for smiles. We have been built up in love and we acknowledge this and give you praise. 
Thank you for our leaders and we pray for renewing of their strength and refilling by your Holy Spirit. Restore them and lead them in your ways and continue please to give them Jesus joy. We pray for Stephanie, for Andy, for Jess, for our church wardens, for Bob and Sylvia and Barbara and Keith. Please pour your blessing and protection upon them and their families, we pray. We thank you for their willingness to serve. We pray for everyone in our church family for peace in these days, that we may all receive the perfect peace that comes from you, Father God. We especially pray from our parish prayer directory today for Dan and Coralie Gullock and Joanne and Jennifer and for Jenny Geimer. Lord, please sustain them, please sustain them all and give them refreshment and patience and good health. Lord, finally, we pray for each other <coughs> as we begin our church Lent season together. May we be even more open to you and even more open to receive your love for us. And may we delight even more in offering to you our love and praise. Lord, we need your help. Lord, Lord please, please help, help us. us. And we will conclude our prayers together, saying the prayer that Jesus taught us, starting Our Father. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Bye for now. And then now um, Stephanie and Jess are going to lead us in Our Father.
And so we come to a time of the peace. Peace to this house from God our Heavenly Father. Peace to this house from his Son who is our peace. Peace to this house from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And now Keith and Sheila are going to lead us in. We will meet him in the air. join together in our spiritual communion because we can't meet for communion at this time we say together almighty god in union with the faithful at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the father 
I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may ever be united to you. And since I now cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate me from you. Let me live and die in your love. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, grant that as the hem of your garment, touched in faith, healed the woman who could not touch your body, so the soul of your servant may be healed by faith in you, whom I cannot now sacramentally receive, through your tender mercy, who lives and reigns with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. So now we join together in singing our closing hymn, There is a Redeemer. Thank you, Rob and Lydia. The words are on the screen. There is a Redeemer, Jesus God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One, thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Jesus, my Redeemer, name above all names, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, oh, for sinners slain. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving Son, and leaving your spirit till the work on earth is done. When I stand in glory, I will see his face, and there I'll serve my King. So we come to the blessing. Um, do join us on Tuesday for prayers and on Sunday, uh, Wednesday, sorry, join us on Wednesday for our Ash Wednesday service. So there's a service at 10 o'clock and then there's a service at 7.30 in the evening. Both will be on our Facebook page. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.
fails me all my days I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Thank you.